Okay, so today we've got some a mix of stuff in the booth. Everything from a little mailbox up to a rear end. Uh, some of the stuff is in bare metal. Some of it is not. Uh, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna I'm gonna use epoxy as a sealer, and why I'm doing that is because I have a mix of stuff. I don't want to mix a 2K sealer and put it on a couple parts and mix epoxy and put it on a couple parts, so I'm just going to use epoxy for everything. Good uh, good example to show you guys of what you can do. We're using the DP50LV gray primer as a sealer today. Uh, using the 401 LV, there is a 402 activator which requires an induction period and, and whatnot. I'm also using 885 GT885 instead of the 8764 reducer that this epoxy calls for, which is, it works fine. There's really no problem with it. It's uh, the 8764 is a more compliant reducer. Another reason why we use epoxy over a 2K sealer on sandblasted parts is a lot of times your blast profile will be deeper than the mill thickness of your etch primer. And what I mean by that is you've got all these areas where your your sandblasting or your, your media has blasted a pit. In there you've got these mountaintops and each one of these craters might be a mill or two thick. Your dry film build of most etch primers is around a half a mil, ridiculously thin. And what that's going to do is it's going to dry down and you're going to have the tops of these peaks exposed with no dry film build etch primer. Epoxy is going to be a thicker film build and it's going to actually fill over top of all these mountain peaks and it's going to be the base of your corrosion protection. Mini block set on this body as well. It seems to work pretty well. 